Good morning, second graders. Happy Friday. Today we are going to be reading a book by one of my favorite authors, Tommy DePaula. I'm sure that you have read a story or two by him before. One of his most famous stories is called Streganona, about a little old woman who lives in an Italian village and she has a magic pasta pot. If you haven't read that book, it's on Tumble Books, which is on our Canvas page, so you should check it out. But today we're going to read his book called The Art Lesson. And Tommy DePaula writes a lot of books about his own life or narratives. And you've been working on that with writing or in writing with Mrs. Redden. So I'm wondering if this is a book or a story about when he was a little boy. It's called The Art Lesson. So let's read and find out. Remember, on the back of all books, not all books, but most books, there's a little synopsis or blurb or a few sentences about what the book will be about, and it's a good way to gauge whether you might want to read the whole book. So I'm going to read the back to you, and it gives a summary of what it will be about. It says the art lesson. Tommy wants to be an artist. Oh, Tommy. His name's Tommy. It must be him when he was little. Tommy wants to be an artist when he grows up and can't wait to meet his art teacher when he gets to first grade. Then he finds out that she expects him to copy her pictures. Tommy knows real artists don't copy. But after some discussion, they find a solution that allows the artist in Tommy to shine. That makes me want to read it. I want to see what their solution was. So the problem seems to be that Tommy doesn't want to copy because that's not what real artists do. And we need to figure out what their solution is. So The Artist, written and illustrated by Tommy DePaula. Here we go. Tommy knew he wanted to be an artist when he grew up. He drew pictures everywhere he went. It was his favorite thing to do. His friends had favorite things to do, too. Jack collected all kinds of turtles. Herbie made huge cities in his sandbox. Gianni, Tommy's best friend, could do cartwheels and handstands on her head. But Tommy drew and drew and drew. Look, he draws pictures of his friends, Jack and Herbie, and his friend who loves to do cartwheels, Gianni. His twin cousins, who were already grown up, were in art school learning to be real artists. They told him not to copy and to practice, practice, practice. So he did. Says Tommy sighed. I wonder if you have anywhere in your house that your artwork is hung up. I know I saw Addison and Emma had a bunch of their artwork behind them in my meeting with them the other day. His mom put them up all around the house. His dad took them to the barber shop where he worked. Tom and Nana, Tommy's Irish grandfather and grandmother, had his pictures in their grocery store. Nana Fall River, his Italian grandmother, put one in a special frame on the table next to the photograph of Aunt Chloe in her wedding dress. Fall River is a place in Rhode Island, and my whole dad's family is Italian just like Tommy DePaulo is Italian. And he, my dad grew up in Rhode Island too. Once Tommy took a flashlight and a pencil under the covers and drew pictures on his sheets. <gasps> I'd be so mad. But when his mom changed the sheets on Monday and found them, she said, no more drawings on the sheet, Tommy. His mom and dad were having a new house built. So Tommy drew pictures on what it would look like when it was finished. Our house, our summer house, the garden. I like how he's labeling his pictures. When the walls were up, one of the carpenters gave Tommy a bright piece of blue chalk. Tommy took the chalk and drew beautiful pictures all over the unfinished walls. But when the painters came, his dad said, that's it, Tommy, no more drawing on the walls. Tommy couldn't wait to go to kindergarten. His brother Joe told him there was a real art teacher who came to school to give art lessons. When do we have art lessons? Tommy asked the kindergarten teacher. 
Oh, you won't have your art lessons until next year, she said, said Miss Bird. But we are going to paint pictures tomorrow. It wasn't much fun. The paint was awful and the paper got all wrinkly. Miss Bird made the paint by pouring different colored powders into different jars and mixing them with water. The paint didn't stick to the paper very well, and it cracked. If it was windy when Tommy carried his picture home, the paint blew right off the paper. At least you get more than one piece of paper in kindergarten, his brother Joe said. When the art teacher comes, you only get one piece. Tommy knew that the art teacher came to school every other Wednesday. He could tell she was an artist because she wore a blue smock. So a smock is like an apron that you might wear that someone you know might wear when they're cooking to keep their clothes clean. A blue smock over her dress, and she always carried a big box of thick colored chalks. Once Tommy and Gianna, Gianni looked at her drawings, they were hung up in the hallway. They were done by the first graders. Your pictures are much better, Gianni told Tommy. Next year, when we have real art lessons, you'll be the best one. Tommy could hardly wait. He practiced all summer. Then, on his birthday, which was right after school began, his mom and dad gave him a box of 64 Crayola crayons. Regular boxes of crayons had red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, brown, and black. This box had so many other colors. Blue, violet, turquoise, red, orange, pink, and even gold, silver, and copper. Class, said Mrs. Landers, the first grade teacher, next month the art teacher will come in our room, so on Monday, instead of singing, we will practice using our crayons. Is that what I sound like? On Monday, Tommy brought his 64 crayons to school. Miss Landers was not pleased. Everyone must use the same crayons, she said. School crayons. School crayons only have the same old eight colors. As Miss Landers passed them out to the class, she said, These crayons are school property, so do not break them. Peel off the paper or wear down the points. How am I supposed to practice being an artist with school crayons? Tommy asked Jack and Herbie. That's enough, Tommy, Miss Landers said, and I want you to take those birthday crayons home with you and leave them there. And Joe was right. They only got one piece of paper. Finally, the day of the art lesson came. Tommy could hardly sleep that night. The next morning, he hid the box of 64 crayons under his sweater and went off to school. Uh-oh. Do you, What do you think's gonna happen? Was he supposed to do that? He was ready. Do you think they'll notice? The classroom door opened and in walked the art teacher. Miss Lander said, Class, this is Mrs. Bowers, the art teacher. Patty, who was our paper monitor this week, will give out one piece of paper to each of you. And remember, don't ruin it because it's the only piece of paper you'll get. Now pay attention to Mrs. Bowers. Class, Mrs. Bowers began, because Thanksgiving is not too far away, we will learn to draw a pilgrim man, a pilgrim woman, in a turkey. Watch carefully and copy me. Copy? Copy? Tommy knew that real artist didn't copy. This was terrible. This was supposed to be a real art lesson. He folded his arms and just sat there. Now what's the matter? Miss Landers asked Tommy. Tommy looked past her and spoke right to Mrs. Bowers. I'm going to be an artist when I grow up, and my cousin told me that real artists don't copy. And besides, Mrs. Landers won't let me use my one sixty-four Crayola crayon, my own 64 Crayola crayons. What do you think Mrs. Bowers is going to tell him? Well, well, Mrs. Bowers said, what are we going to do? She turned to Mrs. Landers and they whispered together. Miss Landers nodded. Now, 
Now, Tommy, Mrs. Bower said, it wouldn't be fair to let you do something different from the rest of the class. But I have an idea. If you draw the pilgrim man and woman and the turkey, and if there's any time left, I'll give you another piece of paper. And you can do your own picture with your own crayons. Can you do that? I'll try, Tommy said with a big smile. That sounds like a good compromise to me. And he did. And he did. So he drew what everyone in art class was supposed to draw, and then he drew his art teacher, Mrs. Bowers. And he still does. So this was a narrative. This book was about our author, illustrator, Tommy DePaula. And here is the book. Whoops. Here's the book that I was telling you about. There's Draga Nona. So maybe the title didn't ring a bell, but maybe now that you see what Draga Nona looks like, it does. And then here's some characters in other books that he's written. So I will... Um, I'll try to include another book for you to listen to by Tom and DePaula today in your schedule. He's, again, one of my favorite authors. Sorry, someone's cleaning the window outside, and I thought it was a mouse, and it got me a little nervous. So anyway, I hope you have a good day. I will. We will try to all get together later in the day and see if that will work out. It may, and if it doesn't, we'll try another way another time, okay? But that's my hope. I hope that we can do a little partner reading with the kids are at, who are at school so we can spend a little bit more time together because I miss everyone. And like I said, we will, as more time goes on, things will get better. Remember, we've only done things this way for eight days now. We had been all online, and now some of us are in person and some of us are online. And so we're still working out the kinks, but it's really only been eight days. And I know that it's hard to remember that sometimes because it feels like forever. But things will get better. We'll iron out the kinks. We'll figure it out. We're going to do this. You're doing great. And I miss and love all of you. And if I don't see your face later today, I hope you have an excellent weekend. Bye.